In this video, what we're going to do is take a look at a couple of modifier layers that we can apply to our fields, specifically the decay and freeze. Now, these are a lot more interesting than you might initially think. We'll see quite a few things we can do with them. So let's go ahead and get started. Here are the three examples I'm going to be going over today with the decay and the grow mode of freeze. And what we'll see is that um, the decay really enhances existing MoGraph animation, whereas the grow uh, allows us to create animation that might be tricky otherwise, whether it's just kind of growing outward from an existing field and something geometric, if it's applied to say a cloner, um, perhaps something that we want to uh, render out as an AOV and composite in After Effects, or if we want to create kind of an organic growing effect, something that looks a little bit more natural, uh, we can do that. And I think a vertex map is the best way to show that. So those are the three things we're going to be diving into. Starting with the decay, the setup we have here is a cloner with a plane effector applied to it and a spherical field that's just animated moving through. Now, you know, with a lot of our MoGraph animations, um, what we get looks pretty good, but there's always room to improve it. And, um, Big place to start with that is the remapping section of your field. The inner offset can help depending on the shape of the field, as well as working with the contour to curve out the sides or enhance the animation by making it a little bit slower or faster. And that's really where a lot of these modifier layers come in here. I've already talked about the delay uh, as a way to enhance MoGraph animation. The decay is, is a little bit like that. Um, it works on existing animation. Um, and what we'll see is the decay is going to work on or influence our cubes after the field is passed through. And it's going to change the speed that they return to their original um, position. And so if I can just play this through and pause it at a better time, we can see that little kind of trail or tail there is what's uh, being caused by the delay. And I can turn on the color a little bit so we can see that here. So, um, we're getting that extra animation uh, fall off, if you will. I almost want to say it's delayed, but uh, I don't want to confuse anybody with the, the delay effector there. But yeah, we're getting that extra animation where the cubes outside of the field are returning to their position slower. All right. Um, and if you use a lower effect strength, you will see less of it. If you use a higher effect strength, you will see more. And uh, in terms of the modes, even the help file you know, says you're going to use the maximum mode. So that's all we're going to be talking about here. So along with the MoGraph type of animation we're seeing here, this to me also looks like it could be really useful if we are going to do, say, a wet map or a roughness map for, say, um, some condensation rolling down a bottle where uh, you have this field, you know, on your, your geometry, your bottle, your can, your, your glass, whatever, it has that condensation. And you're using this to generate um, this image, this map, if you will, these colors that we could then use and say the roughness of a material uh, to get our wetness type map here that um, I know you can do very easily with say X particles or something like that, but we can also do it with um, MoGraph. And maybe that's something I will make a video on at some point. But yeah, that's essentially the decay, a great way to just add a little bit more animation on top of your existing field animation. So here's our first example with freeze. Really what we're going to be doing here is using the same setup as previously, planar, I'm sorry, cloner with a plane effector, another spherical applied that's kind of been pus positioned in the middle there. And we're going to add a freeze to this. Now you do want to be a little bit careful when you apply this freeze, especially if your field is animated. In this case, mine is not. So it isn't as big of a deal um, because it's going to freeze it. It's going to stop that animation and it can be tricky working with the freeze and an animated field. Um, now the modes here uh, are what we're mostly concerned with. And while there is, you know, max and min average, all pretty straightforward, uh, the grow perhaps not as much so. And um, with the grow, we need to think about the radius because it's that distance that's going to matter when it comes to how fast or if this will even grow. And you need to think about the objects in their sizes. In this case, our cubes are 200 centimeters. And so it's about that radius that I'm going to need to enter to see very much going on here. Now, if I initially hit play, it is going to grow out um, and apply the plane effector to all of the cubes that had it um, that were inside our sphere here. So even if they just had the 
um, the plane effector applied a little bit because they were towards the outside of that sphere, it's going to apply it 100% over time. And this radius here is important because that's how we apply it to other cubes. And it needs to be a little bit larger than your geometry. So notice how 200 did not work, 201 did. And so that's how we get that, that growing effect. We can also turn on color for that freeze if we want to get it to kind of, you know, move out like that. Um, and once again, this could be useful in AOVs, custom AOVs, using say Redshift. I made a video about that previously. Um, you know, if you want to use that in compositing to change the color of something, make it glow, you know, you name it. All right. But yeah, that is kind of what's happening here. We're now growing outward from our initial selection or where our plane of our spherical field was applied. But we don't have a lot of control over this. We don't have as much control as, say, a linear field here, right? Um, and so, you know, the shape is what is a bit unique here compared to, say, working with a linear field. Um, and while we can add other fields on top to help with that, say, a random field, um, I think that's better off. Uh, you're easier to see when we work with vertex maps. So that's what we're going to do next. All right. So in this next part where we're going to continue to talk about the freeze, we are going to see it applied in a vertex map. And I think that's a little bit easier because with a vertex map, things tend to have a little bit more resolution, or you can at least control the resolution a bit um, with the, the width and height segments. Whereas with a cloner, you would need a lot of cubes to be able to see kind of the detail and exactly what's happening here with our freeze. So you know, what we have here is a plane um, with a vertex map applied, and that's under other tags, right? Vertex map. And a box field has been applied to just get some kind of initial selection here, okay? You could, you know, select a point if this was an editable object, uh, among other ways to get some kind of information into your vertex map here. And on top of this, we will add our freeze. Now, just like before, we want to set the mode to grow. And once again, we need to consider our radius. And in this case, how close our points are together. So you can see a radius of 40 grows things out relatively slowly, but still in a pretty boring, inorganic kind of way. Okay. And uh, this isn't supposed to be 30, it's supposed to be 300. Uh, so the shape matters, the placement of the shape matters. And that's where our random field comes in handy. Now, what I want to point out is if you just apply a random field on top, the freeze is still, or the grow is still going to work on top of it. Okay. So what's currently happening is it's taking all of these values. And just like how in the previous example, it was taking any um, of the cubes that were initially inside of our spherical field and pushing them up to 100% strength of the effector. That's essentially what's happening here in our field with the freeze. So what we want to do is restrict this random field. And you can use a few different blending modes here, depending on what you want. Um, multiply is going to restrict that random field onto our previous um, selection of our plane. And from there, it will grow out. How fast it grows is still based on our radius. So if you want it to grow faster, we can turn up the radius and do something like that. Now, what's interesting with this is since this random field is happening after in, in this uh, blending mode, it doesn't push up the other values to 100%. Um, and so stacking another random field or even freeze on top could help with that. Um, even working with other blending modes, okay? So multiply looked one way, subtract, at least initially looked different, although it really doesn't seem to be doing so much here. Um, can also make a difference, all right? So not screen, clip, pretty much what we had before, I think, yeah. So now we're getting that initial grow that we had, like without the random field. Um, that's kind of weird how it was still visible, right? But then with the random field over top because it's clipping um, to it, okay? So that can be interesting as well, but. Eh, maybe not as nice as we'd like to see. But that multiply, I do think, is the best in this particular case. But there's other things you can do with this random field as well to make it look more interesting, uh, organic, natural, whatever you, you want to call it, realistic. Um, I already said that. So turbulence, changing the noise type can help. Adjusting the scale here. 
right? The larger this scale pattern is, notice how that has a significant impact on the way our grow looks, right? It looks really different now. This definitely to me looks a lot more um, realistic, okay? We could also animate this as well to make this look more interesting, okay? Um, in fact, we could probably put a decay on top of this um, and increase the strength. And that would get this to start to bleed, not bleed, but to stay that brighter value even longer. Okay, and if we used enough strength, maybe had enough animation speed, we could get it to, you know, st turn 100% yellow there, All right? We're getting closer, definitely on the right track with that. But yeah, that could be another kind of interesting you know, technique to grow something. And remember, this is in a vertex map. So it can be applied in a deformer. It can be applied um, in a bunch of other places. Dynamics, okay? So if you wanted to turn something um, into cloth and have it, you know, transition, we could do it this way as well. So um, really nice technique for, you know, growing something, making it look really interesting, changing the property in a simulation, that type of thing. That will do it for this video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please let me know. And until next time, take care.